Okay, in this video I'm going to continue on with my tutorials moving us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 3 and I'm going to discuss the wave equation. The previous video to this which is relevant is number 2 where I discussed waves and I showed you where, why we use f as a function of x plus or minus v times t. So once again this is a, a new way for me to record via e-paper so you're going to have to excuse my writing. I'd like it to be better but it's not yet there. So in the previous video, what we showed is as follows. We Just a very uh, quick recap. We said that when we're talking about waves, we give the placeholder psi for the waves. And we'll say if they're a function, if it's a one dimensional wave equation, it will be a function of position and time. So we call this the wave function because it describes exactly what the wave looks like. And for example, we might have e to the minus a outside of x plus or minus vt squared and that gives us a Gaussian wave function moving to the right uh, sorry it gives us uh, moving to the right if it's uh, minus v times t and moving to the left if it's plus v times t so that's our wave function and the point the, the important point to remember here is that when we were deriving this we spoke about the person at the origin watching the wave move and we spoke about the person who is moving with the wave in the, the primed frame of reference and he might be here. And what we did here, this x plus or minus v times t brings us from the s prime of frame of reference back to the s frame of reference. So now what we seek to do is to use the information derived in the previous video to develop a general form of the one dimensional differential wave equation. Now why do we want to have differential wave equation? Why why is this, why are there going to be derivatives involved in this? Well because we're talking about rates of change, we're talking about a dynamic system, it's going to change and as a result we need to discuss derivatives because derivatives are what uh, discuss rates of change. It's quite, it's, it's quite, um, uh, you know, it's intuitive I suppose in that, in that respect. So to that end what we need to do is start taking partial derivatives. Now I'm not really going to go into the, the mathematics behind it, just accept that in order to derive the wave equation we need to start taking partials. So what we're going to do is first of all we're going to take, we're going to take a new color to start. So we're going to take the partial derivative of the wave function psi with respect to x. But the important point to remember here is that we could write the wave equation as follows. Psi could be a function of position and time like this in the s frame of reference or it could be a function of x prime that's supposed to be x prime in the s prime frame of reference. Okay, and the s prime frame of frame of reference, we're not of it's not a function of t, of course. So, in order for us to take del psi del x, we need to, to use the chain rule. All right. So, what we have here is that we have del psi. We have del x, and we need to use the chain rule to take into account that it's a function of x prime. Now, del x prime del x is going to be one. So, what we're left is del we have del psi del x. All right. Now the next thing is we know that the wave function is a function of t. So let's say that somehow the wave function was time dependent in the s and the s prime frame of reference. Now because time is ubiquitous or t time is the same uh, for everybody. Well, it's not it's not really the same for everybody I suppose if you're thinking about relativity. But we're going to say really that the rate of change of the wave function in the s frame of reference and the s prime frame of reference is the same. So what that will mean is if we take del psi del t, the rate of change of the wave function with respect to t is going to be the same as del f del t, like that. Okay. Okay. Now to move on from there. So I'm just going to clear that up. Next, the next thing we need to do is start taking the partials with respect to time. So we're going to get, if I find my cursor, we're going to have, we need to get del psi del t. So once again, we have the chain rule. So you have del psi del t. And then we have del x prime and del x prime. Now we know that uh, this here is distance over time that gives us a speed. So we have 
to be most general, plus or minus v, that's the speed, and then we have del psi del x prime. Now what we're trying to do really is we're trying to get only the s the s prime, or excuse me, the s coordinates in. So we want psi, we want x, and we want t. We want no mention of f, and we want no mention of x prime. So what we're going to try and do is basically eliminate f and eliminate x prime, and we can do that because we've del psi del x prime here, and we, sorry, we've um, del psi del x prime here, and down here we've del psi del x prime because that's a typo. So putting them all together, we get this, that del psi del t is going to be equal to plus or minus the velocity of the wave del psi del x. Okay, and this is getting us closer to our differential wave equation. So what this says is that the rate of change of the wave function psi with respect to time and with respect to position are equal. And they are equal to within the multiplicative constant uh, we call v. Okay, and it's plus v if it's moving to the left and it's minus v if it's moving to the right. So the thing is though, we need two constants in order to specify the wave. At the moment we, we only have one constant, velocity. And we'll see in a moment that the other constant is also velocity, so we get a v squared. But in order to get this other velocity, we need to tar start taking the second partial derivatives. So we need to get uh, del 2 psi del x squared and del 2 psi del t squared. So to bear with me a moment, I'm going to clear this. And I'm just going to do, where is my cursor? Bear with me a moment. I'm going to write down some of the information we have here. We saw a minute ago that del psi del t was equal to plus or minus v del psi del x. And we saw that once more del psi del t is equal to plus or minus v times del f del x prime. So what that means of course is that if we get del 2 psi del x squared, it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's simply going to be del 2f del x prime squared like that. But the hard one is we need to get del del t of del psi del t. That's the more difficult one to do. So what we need to do is get del del t of plus or minus v times del f del x prime. Now here we need to use the theorem of partial derivatives. That it doesn't matter which order you apply the derivatives if it's if you're applying more than one derivative. So for example, del del t, and if you apply it in this order on psi uh, or f or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter. That's going to be equal to del del x prime del del t on psi. So it doesn't matter which order you do, provided you're doing more than one partial derivative. So what that means is we can exchange the order here. We can we can actually get the derivative with respect to t before we get the derivative with respect to x prime. So to rearrange it then what we're going to have is del del x prime of del f del t. Now why would we want to, why would we have any interest in doing that? Well, the reason we have an interest in doing that is because we, we saw we saw earlier on that del psi del t is del f del t prime. Oh, uh, sorry is del f del t. It's the same down here. Okay, so what we can do now is rewrite this. So we have, uh, rewrite them, just close it off like this. So what we have is the following, del 2 psi, del t squared, is equal to v squared, del 2 f, del x prime squared. Okay, now, we do the same trick as the last time. We try and get rid of the f prime or the x prime and the f. So we have enough information for us to do that now, and I can write down the answer. So we have our differential wave equation as del 2 psi del x squared is 1 over v squared, 1 over v squared del 2 psi del t squared. And this is the differential wave equation. So notice, of course, that we have this multiplicative constant of 1 over v squared, the velocity of the wave. No, note, of course, you might see people write it this way. They would use the Laplacian. 
it's an easier way to use it and that's because the Laplacian is equal to del 2 del x squared plus del 2 del y squared and so on it's an operator okay I'm just no lo noting it there for uh, I suppose completeness but I don't really want to use that notation not yet okay and this is the differential wave equation so if we solve this wave equation it will give us the wave function psi okay so that means all the information about our wave function is inside the wave equation so we need to be able to solve the wave equation now just to write it so we had uh, actually I'm just gonna write I'm gonna write it this way just because it's easier so we had this now I've done a series of videos on the uh, on solving differential equations, second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients, which is exactly what we have here. Now I don't want to go into that yet, but I can just give you the results. So the what results? Well, the results are as follows. This is linear. So if we have a solution psi one, and we also have a solution psi two, it means that psi one plus psi two is also a solution. That's supposed to be a plus. It's linear. Uh, uh, th sorry, that allows us to add solutions. So this is called the superposition principle. Now you might think this is not important. I can tell you that the superposition of wave functions is what allows us to do harmonics. So sound harmonics, that's all. That's what we have there. Uh, quantum mechanics, can't be done without it. And all of it is the the mathematical analysis is, analysis is called Fourier series. Okay, so Fourier series is all about adding the uh, adding wave functions or adding solutions, all about the superposition of principle. So, just to move on from there. Now, why is this important? Uh, well, I, I told you why it's important, I suppose, because that's that's how we actually get solutions. We get solutions by uh, re real solutions by getting psi one, getting another psi two, and adding them. That get, gives us the most general solution. So that means that the most general wave function. So, say I'm going to call it psi general is going to be equal to a constant, call it psi1, and a wave going to the right, plus another constant, psi c2, and a wave going to the left. Okay, and this is it. Now what we can say is that, say psi1, this might be here, this might be psi1, this might be psi2, okay, and what we call these, these are particular solutions. Okay, we've so you add the particular solutions and multiply these 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 constants in as well, and you get the general solution to your wave equation. All right, so I don't really want to get too much in in into depth with solving the wave equation and using Fourier series because that's not really what we're really about. What we need to know is that when you get the wave equation, which looks like this, you have the velocity squared. That's the multiplicative constant. You have the the second order rate of change with respect to position of your wave function here grad squared psi and then you have this the, the second derivative with respect to time as well and this gives us the wave function and in order to get the most general wave function we find any two solutions we solve it and we get a general solution one we solve it we get a general solution two and we add the two of them together so we get psi one plus psi two but we multiply constants let's say b and a and we get the most general solution now if that's over your head that's okay that's not a big deal what the important thing to know is where the, the wave equation came from. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also uh, give us some feedback in the comment box below.